Hey ladies, I <laughs> I guess I could record this whole episode and never tell you this, but I'm just the most transparent person you'll probably meet and I had a, you know, topic for this episode. This is episode 132. It's been, you know, on my calendar actually for months. And then life just kind of happened and I decided to go a totally different direction with this episode. I'm really excited. If you saw the title, you might be thinking, what? (laughs) What if I stop working out? What are you talking about? Well, let's just dive in so I can share what I'm talking about. Welcome to the Health Life and More for Women podcast. This is a podcast for women who are ready to ditch diets, ditch the scale and food guilt forever and instead invite peace with food, body trust, and confidence in all of your choices. This show will shed some light on sneaky ways diet culture has infiltrated your thoughts, your family, and your well-being. I believe that no matter the episode, you'll walk away feeling informed, inspired, and encouraged. I'm your host, Jennifer D'Amato. I'm a certified intuitive eating counselor, coach, a mom of four daughters, a lover of all things pink, and I can't wait to dive into each and every episode with you. Let's dive in now. So this past week, I went to a new gym, and I'll expand on that a little bit more, but (laughs) what occurred to me as I was walking in on the Monday morning, I hadn't been to a gym probably in about two months. Now, if you followed me for a really long time, you know, I've been kind of a a daily goer. Then I went to like three times a week and then I just stopped. Like I just stopped. I didn't have it in me. I didn't have any desire. I was tired and going felt like an absolute chore. Now, this is different from like the detox I needed to take when I stopped obsessively working out. This felt different and I just, I just didn't want to go. I didn't want to be at the gym and I couldn't really pinpoint it, but I just knew I didn't want to be there. So I stopped. Now, unfortunately, that kind of had a negative impact on my second born who you know, I was taking twice a week and she just kind of rolled with it and was like, that's okay. She had a lot going on with school and things like that. But still, I knew that, you know, it impacted her. So I took some time to do some reflection on what might be stopping me from working out. And I really searched in my own thoughts and came to the conclusion that I don't have to. (laughs) I don't have to go to a gym and work out. I move my body. It's something I teach my clients all the time that I move my body throughout the day, whether it's stretching, you know, at my desk, getting up and moving, it's chores, especially that, you know, deep cleaning stuff. I'm giving myself even that credit for laundry because dang, (laughs) that's a, that's a mental chore, but it's also a physical chore. You know, just all the things like I am moving my body. I'm taking walks and we took us this family trip and I I noticed like this is a lot more walking you know than normal but this is feeling pretty good just to be outside and, and walking around well the truth is movement of any kind is good for you right that I, I'm never gonna say don't move at all ever that that wouldn't make sense and it's not good for your body never to move. But do you need to work out? Like that's kind of an air quote. Do you need to go to a gym or participate in a group fitness class or get on a Peloton or, you know, run on the treadmill, go out jogging, you know, whatever is more in the workout kind of definition? The answer is no. Literally, <laughs> nothing changed when I didn't work out for two months. Nothing. I had a little bit more sleep. My body just took time to rest. It moved when it felt good. And I was able to kind of assess my needs better. Now, like I just said at the beginning, I was at a gym 
I'm recording this, you know, later in the week, like I said, kind of changed everything. And I went to a new gym, new to me. It's not like it's a new gym. And had a whole other bunch of thoughts (laughs) that came with that. (laughs) All right. So all transparency, right? That's what I said. That's where we are. I joined a Planet Fitness and I had so many thoughts about this because in my disordered eating days, in my, you have to work out, you know, six days a week, two to three hours a day, like really, it was so unhealthy. I judged Planet Fitness. Even though there is a Planet Fitness, literally, it takes me two and a half to three minutes, depending on the light from my house. I would drive 15 to 20 minutes to a different gym because that gym represented in my mind, you know, people who are really committed to working out. Now, when I left that gym, because another gym, you know, similar to it, but lower cost, (laughs) had opened near my house, still though, 10 minutes away, I still would not join Planet Fitness because, you know, these people are not committed enough. Like I can't be in here. I need heavier weights. I need, you know, the gym bros. Like I need all of that for motivation. And so I joined this other gym and for a while, because there was this residual disordered eating and body image issues that I was just starting to unpack, you know, it was working for me until it didn't until I hated showing up that it was one of those things I had to almost force myself. And let me be clear, that's one of those like sneaky diet culture things, making yourself have to do something that you really don't want to do. Now, for a long time, I was still committed to getting up at 4.30 in the morning. Now, I have shared, you know, during disordered eating, I mean, I was up at 3.30. I was actually meeting people at the gym for a while at 3.30 a.m., At 3.30 a.m., I was already there at the gym. I know. I know. But for a while, I was still getting up at 4.30 because I wanted to be home and, you know, have coffee with my husband and, you know, get my morning going and all of that. Yeah, I've stopped that. That was the first big shift. I sat down with myself (laughs) and said, Jen, you cannot do this anymore. You cannot do this anymore. You have to reevaluate what is important. And so I stopped going to the gym. And a couple months after that, I, I have to stop, like I just couldn't do it anymore. I said to my second born, I was like, let's go look at Planet Fitness. And I almost had to make myself do that. Again, I had all these old beliefs, old thoughts, you know, running through my head. And it might seem totally ridiculous, but if you've been part of the gym diet culture, you probably have had the same thoughts about either Planet Fitness or a different kind of gym that, you know, that people are a little bit more what you perceive, right? Relaxed about things. I mean, it's really not even true. And this is why I changed the entire episode because I did go work out there. And like any gym, there's a variety of people. There's people you can tell are just there and they're happy to be there, just walking on the treadmill, getting out, moving their body. There are people who are committed to really lifting weights, you know, you know, muscular, there's all body types and I love it. But what I loved even more was how I felt in this gym. It was so chill and calm. And I felt like, what stopped you? Okay. I knew what stopped me. (laughs) It was my completely disordered, you know, eating and disordered thinking and my body image issues. (laughs) I know that, but I still had this thought like, why, why did you let this, this convenience? I feel like a weight has been lifted off of me because I'm literally driving three minutes there and three minutes back. I can even pass by my, you know, local grocery store and stop there in the morning. (laughs) So much easier. Oh my goodness. 
I'm still getting everything, you know, accomplished that I want to before I start my work day. And it was kind of this sit back moment to see, yes, I've come this far. I, I, I can see the changes. I know how much work I've done. But it also was that reminder of the places that diet culture infiltrates, the thoughts that it manipulates, what kinds of workouts you know are, are acceptable in diet culture, how long you should be working out when you are immersed in diet culture, what you should be doing. You know, the word should alone, right, is like a no-no around here. It really was that reminder that diet culture isn't just about food. Diet culture spreads everywhere. Anything that has to do with your body, which consuming food, moving your body, the exercise part, right? How you feel in your skin, the clothes you wear, the beauty industry, the clothing industry, all of these things, they're all melded together. And when we start breaking one down, we can't help but break the other ones down. Oh, I feel a sense of relief. I feel a sense of joy sharing this with you. Because maybe you've never addressed the thoughts about working out. Maybe you've never addressed the thoughts about what you think about exercise, moving your body, where you work out, how long you work out. And I just want to present that to you just to take a moment of reflection. You know, we adopt these beliefs because of diet culture sometimes, what's been modeled for us. We we adopt these beliefs sometimes because they've been part of a, a program we were part of. And I, I challenge all of my own thoughts to say, is this my thought? Is this something I believe to be true? Is this something true for me? Mm. These, these are the thoughts, these are the questions, this is the curiosity that I invite in all the time, but I really did invite in when it came to working out exercise, whatever word. I mean, I always use the word movement because the words exercise or working out can have this negative connotation, can have all of this stuff yet, you know, we need to unpack. All right. I just had to take a sip of water because I realized I've been talking for like 10 minutes straight. (laughs) I can always tell when I'm really excited to talk about something, passionate about something is... I don't even take a breath. So if you're the kind of listener that listens on like one and a quarter speed or whatever, when you listen to podcasts, I'm never offended. I just can only imagine what I sound like on a higher speed (laughs) because I'm already talking fast. I'm already like pumped up, excited, you know, so (laughs) maybe there's a little Elvin and the chipmunks going on, you know, on the podcast (laughs) for you this week. So you might even just want to start with the exploration of this podcast title. What if I stop working out? Like, what does that mean for me? So if you're somebody who is, you know, devoted to working out or you, you know, kind of have a a schedule of things that you do, I'm not suggesting you stop working out. I'm just asking, what if you did? You know, I've had clients in the past where they've had injury or something's happened and they can't work out or they go on vacation and it's not available to them to like do the kind of workouts they're used to doing. And when we are walking away from diet culture, that can be extremely difficult. I know personally, I would not go on vacation without working out. I thought I was somehow better (laughs) than other people. Like, look at me, I'm working out. I can remember there's pictures from my vacation in Hawaii at a gym. I mean, it was the like resort gym, but would not go a day without working out. Even if I was walking all day, we hiked, we did so much physical activity every day. It was like I had to go to the gym. Now, I know I'm not unique in that because I do work with clients who have been completely immersed in those thoughts as well. So you could just start with the exploration. What if I stopped working out? And then you can scoot back here a few minutes in the podcast and kind of go through those other questions and ask yourself, is this true for me? Like, is this really what I believe about movement, about moving my body, about exercise, about working out? Now I have shared 
on the podcast that I have some big things coming and today I get to tell you about one of them and it's it has been like this like I feel like I've been holding on to this secret that I have not been able like to keep to myself can't wait to tell you so if you're ready here it is next week starting with episode 133 I am starting a series all on the principles of intuitive eating. Now, this series is going to be for maybe beginners, those who, you know, are just starting their journey. The the series is going to be for those who don't know anything about intuitive eating. They're like, what is it? I don't know. I'm unfamiliar. Never even heard the term. It's also going to be for those who've been working through the principles of intuitive eating, whether on their own with me, you know, as a, as a client or another practitioner, this series will speak to all of you. What I have created is a digital workbook to go along with every single episode, starting with episode 133, which if you're listening in real time, that's next week's episode. This workbook was created so that you could dig a little deeper into your own health and food and eating experience, you know, your own story. So in this workbook, pages will be included in each weekly release, and you'll have a summary of key points. You'll have a personal notes section, and, and here is where you get to dig deeper. You'll have bonus reflection questions to go through on each and every episode. So it is a one-time purchase, one-time download. And then each week before the episode releases, you get the next week's pages with those key points, note section, and bonus reflection questions that are specific to that episode. So you can grab this anytime. If you decide, you know, halfway through the series, you're like, why am I not getting this workbook and going through? Because those bonus reflection questions will not be in the episode, but you do want to dig deeper. You want to do that, you know, beginning work on your own thoughts and beliefs about food and your body. You can grab it anytime throughout the series. It runs live May 17th through July 26th of 2022. But here's where you want to make sure you you really get this part. If you purchase the workbook prior to May 16th, you can save 15%. Now, I've made this super affordable, and I'm giving that discount if you purchase it before May 16th. All you have to do is head into the show notes and click Purchase Workbook, I will be sending it directly to you. You'll have those first pages before that first episode even airs. I mean, and then every week from that point on, you will be receiving new workbook pages. I mean, it is such a good deal. (laughs) It's something I wish that, you know, existed for me in this space when I was starting out. So you can head into the show notes wherever you're listening to purchase the workbook, or you can head to www.healthcoachforlife.com slash IE workbook. Again, it's a digital workbook, so you can just print it out. You know, when I, when I do my group coaching and we do things like workbook pages, some of my clients, you know, get themselves a little like one inch binder and, you know, they hole punch and put it in there. You can totally do that. You can stick it all in a folder. You can just print it out and have it with a paper clip. But this is going to be a tool for you to come back to something you can dig deeper into your own story. Like I said, I'm so unbelievably excited. And I was like, you know, I I, want to make it affordable. I want to make it so it's a no-brainer, no matter where you are in your journey. So the one-time purchase of $40 or the savings if you purchase before May 16th will get you 11 weeks. That's 11 weeks of key points on each principle, 11 weeks of you taking notes of, of what you want to take away from the episode and 11 weeks of reflection questions. So you can dig deeper. 
All right, head into the show notes now, head to healthcoachforlife.com slash IE workbook, grab it, purchase it, get that discount. Like I love a discount, which is why I'm giving a discount. Plus I'm so excited about this workbook. I just couldn't help myself. Grab it now. The series starts on May 17th with a kind of intro to the principles episode. And then each and every week after, we're going to go through all 10 principles together. I'm so excited. Oh, wait a minute. Last thing, (laughs) share this, share this episode, share this link, share this workbook. You know, I know we're having conversations with friends, maybe at the gym, we're having conversations with coworkers and, you know, you're, you're hearing from, you know, your friends around you that they're struggling. You know, they started those diets again in January and here we are in May and they're feeling defeated. Maybe you're hearing conversations with friends and family and coworkers who are buying bigger clothes for the summer and they feel feel bad about themselves. They're struggling with their body image. This is going to be an amazing tool to start working through these principles to find healing in your relationship with food and your body. And isn't everything just more fun together? I don't know. I like that part. I like, hey, what did you think of this? Um, And I'm, I'm part of groups like that where we get to kind of dig a little deeper together as well. So invite a friend, share the link, share this episode and share next week with them and invite them to be part of digging deeper into their own relationship with food and body. All right. <laughs> I'm, I can't stop smiling. I'm just so excited. I'm excited to share this. I'm excited to dive into this series this summer with you. All right, ladies, until we meet again next week.